Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Catapult Your Business, where we help catapult businesses one question at a time. I'm being joined by one of our talented clients that has built a really successful engineering practice. We'll talk about that more here in a moment, but he's brought an important question to the table today. We're going to be digging into how do you create systems that allow you to have the foresight to see profitability and visualize profitability on a per widget or by job basis. We're gonna dig in and unpack this. So often business owners are just looking reactively to the books versus proactively when services or products are being delivered. And we're gonna talk about some of the best practices to put in place that allow us to have that visualization. So very excited to have this question brought. It was brought by our client, Marika McKenzie. I've got him joining us here. He's the founder and president of Cornerstone Engineering. It's a civil engineering uh, firm out of Mississippi. Marika, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you. Glad to dig in. Thanks for bringing this question to the table and congrats on your success. I know you've had the business. It's coming up on six years now. Is that right? You're almost to your six year anniversary. That's right. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> or when you're working your butt off. <laughs> one of one of the two. And, and uh, that too. Yeah, that too. Exactly. Both. Well, I know you and I caught up a little bit earlier uh, before we jumped on and you were talking about how you got in the business as you come from a family of entrepreneurs and wanted that autonomy and kind of wanted that financial freedom. So this question obviously, you know, ties in very well. Um, but what 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 type of stuff do you do on the civil engineering side? Well, we do a multifaceted um, approach to projects. We are in the construction engineering, civil engineering, which deals with public works yep. projects. Most of our clients are municipalities, wow. governmental type contracts. And so we basically design water systems, whether it be elevated water tanks, water lines, water wells, water yeah. treatment facilities. Same thing with wastewater on the, on the sewage side, sewage collections, systems, pumping systems, uh, drainage, solving, basically solving infrastructure problems that most cities uh, deal with, uh, with water, sewer drainage. All we also do some soil testing, concrete testing, asphalt testing, um, all the things uh, some that people, building design. All the things that people take yeah. for granted and don't understand yeah. are happening <laughs> behind the scenes yeah. uh, in the world, right? Right. Out of sight, out of mind. But it's That's important. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, you've you've been successful at building a uh, successful business at it. I mean, in just a few short years, you've created a multi-million, you know, seven-figure business. So congrats. I know your team is up to 12 people now. Uh, that's fantastic. So you're obviously doing good work. And just, again, congratulations on, on the entrepreneurial journey and, and what you've accomplished so far. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, Thank you. Thank yeah, you, you appreciate back. calling me. Yeah. Well, look, we're, we're really happy to be your partner and, and thanks for, for letting us come along for the ride here for with you for the last couple of years. I know we've enjoyed it. So and excited to see what you're going to go off and do and, and continue to grow and scale. So uh, speaking of scale, let's let's catapult a little further here. I'm you know, I'm digging into what you brought over the table here today. And you said, hey, Casey, it'd be helpful to slow down and get visualization into your financials on a job basis. And this is challenging. I find a lot of owners struggle with this. So you're not alone. And I know a lot of people listening in um, specifically to this episode are curious. How do we get that foresight? What's a way we can build a system? Because it is it is a process to get visualization when something is actually going on in the moment, especially in your world, you've got larger size projects that you're you're going through. And how the heck do you go from, you know, scope to winning, winning the opportunity and then have those visualizations so you can try to course correct or at least learn in the moment so you can apply that back to, you know, when you go back to scoping and finding these projects. And it can be an absolute black hole, I know. So I want to dig in. I've got a couple of questions I want to ask. Kind of our classic advising approach is discover first and then implement some some outputs. But right now, uh, I know you've got a time tracking software, but to my knowledge, there's no other software you're using that's helping you know run this you know live time kind of project solution approach. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So there's no other software that's in place now. How are you, you know, time Time is going to help you track the labor side of the business, but there's obviously a bunch of other costs that are that are coming in on a project basis. Is that right? What type of projects are you dealing with? And for everybody listening in, start thinking in your own business, you know, what are those items, um, you know, that you have to think about that are cogs in the business? But what other things in your world, Marika, are you seeing outside of the labor that you're having a hard time tracking? 
Well, first of all, we we um, we use BigTime as our software for our timekeeper. Yep. We also have QuickBooks that we integrate in with BigTime to kind of keep up with budgets and, yep. and that type of thing. Um, we just on a um, project by project basis, just keeping up with hours and budgets, uh, it gets a little difficult to track it and, yep. and stay on top of uh, it in, in an efficient manner. Yep. And so we're, we're working on that. And um, um, that's that's one of our challenges. Is it just the hours? Is it just the hours pr- uh, produced, though? Is that really the, the big route or is there also some clarity on like more live time in terms of spending that's happening in terms of other hard costs? That's right. The expenses will come to mileage and lodging and meals. Yeah. Tying that back to the project that it is associated with, that becomes a challenge. And uh, we kind of do it the old school way with a lot of paper um, mm-hmm. uh, tracking. Um, and we're, we're trying to get more into automation yeah. and have things um, uh, in the cloud and on the server versus having to track a lot of paper. And so it goes back to training staff. we got to have staff that's willing to use technology, uh, scan emails, take pictures of uh, uh, of receipts, uh, yeah. you get an email receipt. Put that in uh, the software so we can automate it and plug it plug it into our system and process. Yeah. So training of the staff and their willingness to comply with all of the uh, uh, tools we have sometimes sometimes is a cha- is a challenge, and um, that's something that we're working through and working on. I'm so glad you brought that up. I wanted to. You know, I don't know if you know my background. I actually had a trades. I've, I started in the trades, and so I had to track a lot of project output. And I want to give you one best practice I've seen done a lot in this environment that has helped immensely with what you just said. So let's start there. So one of the biggest things we've seen is that uh, you just mentioned you hit it the head on down the head. It doesn't matter if you have the automation. It doesn't matter if you have the right expense software. You could put all that in place. If your team doesn't use it, it's pointless. That's really what you're calling out. And you're you're right, right? Bad data in, right. bad outputs. <laughs> so, uh, how do you, how do you actually know you can trust it? Um, I find you have to move the incentive into your staff. And here's a really simple lever and way you could potentially do it. Um, essentially, create some type of apportionment for each project in which the staff involved get to be like they get to share in the success of a project. And the way you can do it is. You allocate an X percentage of cost or however you want it, however you want to structure it for your business. We don't have to get in those details, but you allow them to create the upside, be it, be it within the upside, meaning if we beat the hours, if we beat the hard cost spending, an apportionment of what we beat it by will be spread throughout the staff that works on the project. There's a big caveat though. If there is any delay in reporting of hours, or reporting the expenses through the allocated systems that you set up, those amounts are 100% deducted from the share that you give to the employees. So essentially, (laughs) you you miss my deadline or you don't follow our system or our processes that we put in place, you take the hit, not me, from your portion. What you will find Because there's, I'm assuming, I know a little bit about civil engineering just from the amount of firms we've worked with, but I'm assuming you always have a multi, you know, multi, multiple people on staff on a set project. They don't want to let the other person down. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So they don't want to be that person, right, that, that created a dock. And so I find that actually putting a policy in place first that helps people have an incentive to actually need to follow the systems is the first step that you need to do to actually get that more live time actual tracking coming back. That would be number one. Okay. So that's I think a good that, idea. That will create the environment, right? Because I think without the environment, it's almost impossible to implement the system. Now that I'll assume okay. we have the system and of the environment in place, now let's actually talk a little bit more about the system. Are you on online QuickBooks mm-hmm. in the cloud or are you are are you on desktop QuickBooks? We're online. Okay, online. You're online. Works. Wow. Just want to make sure. And you said you said you've got your timekeeping system hooked up to QuickBooks, right? So you've got that integrated. Yes, it's are integrated. You, right. Are you invoicing on QuickBooks? 
We are invoicing on QuickBooks. That's correct. Are you getting the advice you need for your business from this episode? Do you want to get more than just one question answered and have it customized to you and your business? Well, Cultivate Advisors works one-on-one with thousands of business owners every day. Let them help you scale your business today. Don't just listen to this episode. Take action and go to CultivateAdvisors.com to see which advisor you get matched with and receive a free two-hour business assessment on how you could scale your business to the next level. Act now at cultivatedvisors.com. Okay, perfect. So um, when you are, so when you do your scope or when you do the assessment, are, are you using any type of proposal software or anything that's connecting those those systems together to allocate, to allocate, I'm sorry, what the budget is? Or are you having to manually go in and add those things for every project in QuickBooks? It's manual at this time. We would love to have some kind of automation to allocate that, but at this time it's manual. Okay, so we need we probably need to implement some type of proposal scoping um, technology enablement into the business first. That way we grab that and then that will connect and make sure we need to make sure there's an API that sets up into QuickBooks. Mm-hmm. So that way it can create the job and flow through. There's a bunch of different options that we'll send out in the notes of this episode. Um, Cause you'll have to kind of go do your research and figure out which one is best for you. Once, once you get that into QuickBooks, then obviously that takes care of your invoicing, but now you want to compare on a project by project basis ongoing where the costs are. Do you have an, a expense system you're using? Do you have like an, a cloud expense management software that's on it? It's gotta be app based. So that way your staff can actually use it in the field. Um, but do you have one of those in place right now? Uh, no, we don't, but we do need one. You do need one. Again, same thing. We'll be able to provide some notes of some different options. Um, One of my favorite that we're currently on is File, F-Y-L-E. There's a couple other good ones, depending on exactly how you want to use it. And what's neat, I don't know if you know about the technology now that's out there, Marika, but you can set up where they can use their own cards and expense it, but you can also supply them with cards from the expense software and have pre-approved limits. Mm -hmm. You can even compartmentalize the pre-approved limits by job, by PO. And so what you can create is where they actually max out on their spendings. And now you're in a proactive approach versus a reactive approach. Mm -hmm. It'll start to essentially put your pricing into a, or your, sorry, your your outspend into a box to hopefully protect that profit margin that you're gearing towards. Now, these right. expense so, management so. tools all link back to QuickBooks. And so, mm-hmm. and they can all be tagged by, by your back office to your project. So then it's going to be about taking QuickBooks and creating an auto, automated report for a job report that will kick out. Mm-hmm. It's so essentially, it's a four step process. You have to have the assessment or the proposal in place. That will kick to QuickBooks to allow for billing and and tracking. You then set up an expense management system. Again, you have to create the right environment, uh, you know, for your staff to where they're incentivized to do so. Otherwise, it'll it'll lag on. I I really strongly encourage you to think more about using the expense softwares that allow you to actually give the cards to the staff where you can kind of lock in what their spending behavior is just so that you already yeah. have an idea you'll be within the realm. And then it moves you over now to, you know, getting some type of automated job report. And I'm going to give you a few more details on that here in a moment. But what have I shared so far that you're either going to challenge and say, I don't know if that fits for us, or you're going, actually, that will work. And that's simple enough that we could implement once we find the right software. Well, I like the idea about the policy for incentivizing our guys to be sure they put the expenses receipts in the right place and yep. if they don't it's a it's a bite out of them because uh, that's that's something that uh has been a rub <laughs> yep. trying to get everybody to comply and, and 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 do things in a timely fashion so we can invoice in timely fashion yep um we, we we've had some pretty good employees that were compliant but then there were some that really yes, everyone always else. late always <laughs> yep it seemed like they always late but what? um once they start to take money out of their account, uh, other people's account, that stops pretty fast <laughs> in terms of. I, I think that will help help solve solve that problem. 
Thanks for tuning in to Catapult Your Business, where Cultivate Advisors is helping you catapult your business one question at a time. Are you running your business or is your business running you? At Cultivate Advisors, they'll match you with an expert advisor and do a free two-hour deep dive for your business. This will give you the clarity you need on how to get your business to the next level. Cultivate has worked with thousands of businesses. What do you have to lose? So head over to CultivateAdvisors.com and sign up for your free two-hour session. What's also great, right, is the the reason why you're wanting to put this system in is because you're wanting to protect margin, right? You're you're right. you're wanting to make sure all work you do is profitable, rightfully so, and every entrepreneur wants that. And so again, I can't, you know, sometimes we want to just build out automation or systems to build it. I really view this more as you're trying to streamline this to speed up the the timing of visualization. Is all this is. And I think that's only one tactic to actually solving profitability by widget, right? What I what I love is that you are conscious that so many business owners run their business in a way where it is, well, let's just see how much money I have left at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter and whatever I have, that's what I guess I'll get. It, it, there's a different way. And most companies that are scaling and growing quickly, they are in tune with the profitability by widget and they know exactly how much they make on a per job or per product or per service basis. And so I strongly encourage you to also make sure there is a strong incentive because they bring these this expense back quickly or because they track the hours appropriately as quickly as possible, that when they beat your margin, let them share in it and let that create a bunch of upside because you're going to be shocked the type of efficiencies that start to kick in. And I actually, th- I just don't want to underestimate the power of that in protecting margin more than just the visual because the visual is just a warning sign. It's just for you to know, Oh, I got to slow down. Maybe there's a training issue. Maybe there's a problem. I got to dig into that, right? Maybe the hours Mm -hmm. allocated for a specific employee isn't matching what we allocated in our scope. Is that a, is that my sales team? My, you know, my assessment team who's scoping this, is that incorrect? Or is that, Mm -hmm. or is it the person doing the work or was it just a one-off that we just, you know, we just didn't forecast something that was going to happen when we were on the job. And I think that people, we get confused and we want to look at all areas of that problem versus just going, do we have enough incentive for our team to be tied into the success of our margin and connecting that all the way through? So Mm -hmm. I know you heard the, use the tool to get them to update, but just be mindful, actually aligning the incentive to profitability by widget is such a key factor at this size of the business. When when you're a 20, 30 million dollar company, this may not be as important, Marika, because as you approach that size, you can have so many more guardrails, so much more tech enablement that'll just be impossible to break it. But when you're in this, you know, scrappy environment and 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 working through those growth levers, you you've got to tie them in. It's just you, you're all too busy, right? You don't have enough resource allocation. You don't, you probably don't have a bunch of back office staff being able to run all the financials live time for you like the larger shops do. Um, and you'll get there at some That's point right. soon. But so instead, you just create that upside, right? Anything that beats whatever margin you want, share that with your staff and you will just be shocked how much that alone will solve 90% of why you're trying to solve this. Okay. All right. That's just good, for good idea. Just for clarity. All right. So uh, the only other thing I wanted to slow down on, so this plan versus actual, my experience on on by job management is that it sounds cool in nature and it seems like it will help. But what I actually find, Marika, is that as an owner, you may not actually slow down and take a look at this as often as you may think <laughs> because you're going to get busy. That's right. So how do you create a system right, right to where <laughs> it actually gets to you and you actually do something about it? The biggest, the biggest thing I'd like to bring up is that a lot of companies, when they start to get to this size, they start to incorporate kind of an all hands on meeting where they review margin and a lot of businesses, they call this trend meetings. And so one of the things that will really help is if you can set up an ongoing trend meeting to be with either your project managers or your lead supervisors, depending on what your titles are within your firm, but having that ongoing meeting cadence where you're required to come and look at it and review it, be proactive in setting that up. Because if you don't, you'll build this infrastructure 
and you'll still won't even look at it in the moment. It'll still be reactive, which is not the purpose of creating this environment. It's meant to be live time yeah. course correction is the true value of tracking price per widget or, or profitability, sorry, by widget. Okay. So that'd okay. be the other piece I'd think about. What What's sitting with you or what other questions or concerns are you thinking about in pursuit of solving this problem within your business? Um, as it relates to the uh, profitability by project, is that yep. what you're talking about? Yep. Yeah. We do have another software called Fat, uh, Fathom. Fathom, sure. It's, it's Fathom. It, it's tied in with QuickBooks, and it looks at the overall financial health of the company um, as a whole, not necessarily by project. Yep. Uh, but there may be a, a avenue within that software to also track some profit details by project. And so I'm going to review that some more with Fathom and see if it can be tweaked some. Uh, it's been a really good tool for monitoring the health of our company from month to month. Yep. Total expenses, total revenue. Uh, um, I want to look at that some more. Uh, and I'm also, like you said, these trending meetings. We started trending meetings a year or so ago. Oh, great. And I got busy on projects and we just yeah. haven't revisited that. <laughs> That's also, normal. Good, but. You're right. I need to have more trending meaning to look at the trends because the market is getting soft in places and it's yep. also picking up in places. And I need to know where we need to reallocate resources to stay on the uh, on the front end of things and keep profit high. We, we have a saying at Cultivate, the, uh, the cool business owners know their numbers, right? It's a common It's a common thing for whatever reason. When we get busy, we go to doing the work versus watching the yeah. outputs. Yeah. And so the more you can work on the business versus in the business and do your best to just prioritize yourself and say, what's work? Why am I doing all this work if it's not profitable? And I think if you can just never lose sight of that, you won't cancel or terminate those, those trend meetings. But it's hard, right? Because you get in the moment, yeah. right? I mean, you know, you're, you're in it. I've been there. So many people listening have been there. We're all shaking our heads going, yep. So it's just a good validation. I'm glad to see you started those before. I would keep them going. And for your comments on the other software, I mean, less is more. Less software hooked together, the better. Some people get really adamant and, in, in, you know, that we got to build all this out. So as you build this system, don't overbuild it. If you can leverage a software you already have, fantastic. But I think what's key today to hear is the principles is you need some form of scoping or assessment that will connect then into the actual financial outputs of billing, which will then connect to, you know, post expense management and hour tracking, which you already have. And then you work within QuickBooks to pull out some type of job related reporting uh, or from Fathom or whatever software you have. Try to implement the least amount of softwares as possible because that will be the burden to your team, right? That will create a training mm -hmm. barrier. So less is more and don't over build because in three years time when you've tripled this company you're gonna have to rebuild it again you'll need actually <laughs> more infrastructure I keep finding a lot of times business owners they want to because of all, everything we have at our fingertips with technology and what we see enterprise companies how they behave we try to match them mm -hmm. versus acknowledging where we're at and only invest investing at the level we need to in systems in pursuit of where mm -hmm. we're going so I just want to stress that clearly as you as you embark on this. I'm going to share a bunch more notes of like some of the companies and softwares we're aware of that help solve some of these elements that we're favorites of that we see implemented into a lot of companies. So I'll share that in this episode's notes so everybody listening can find. And obviously, we'll make sure we get that list uh, your way, Marika. Um, Marika, congratulations again on everything you've been able to create uh, with Cornerstone and, and just really the success that you've had. Again, I think a lot of people listening in are like, oh, I'd love to have a seven figure business in just a few short years. So congrats again. If people wanted to learn more about your firm or what you're up to, where's the best place to find you? You can find us on the web uh, at www.cornerstoneenglc.net. Awesome. Uh, you can reach me at my office here, 601-473-2403. Uh, my email address is mmckenzie. That's uh, M-M-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E at Cornerstone, E-N-G, 
LLC.com. All right. Mar- Marika, thanks again. Thanks again also for, for allowing us to be your partner along this journey. And we're truly excited to see what you, what you have in store here in the next couple of years. For everybody listening in, continue to follow your dreams and passion of driving through this entrepreneurial spirit, no matter the ups and downs you're faced with. And I think, you know, Marika brought a phenomenal question to the table today as it pertains to the amount of systemization we have to have to truly get the business to the next level and work through those different levers of scale. So thanks again, Marika, everybody listening in. Until next time, catapult your business. Bye-bye. Thank you.